Hey, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Software Testing. It's me, Daniel. I'm happy that you're here today for yet another video that hopefully is helpful, meaningful for you to gain new skills, insights in the community, in the industry, or into a new topic. You have seen in the title today, I would like to talk about the top nine challenges in test automation. And let's see if you agree with the challenges or if you see more of them. If so, let me know down below in the comments to see them. So why test automation? I mean, this should be an no-brainer. I think I have to had this slide already in other videos, but I'll bring it up again. Why test automation? I mean, test automation is a must in every development team. No matter who is going to implement the automation, is it a tester, is it a developer, a specific test engineer, test automation engineer, it's important that the team knows where to automate and what the benefits are, right? Because if done right, it gives more confidence on code changes, faster time to markets, etc., etc. You know it. Tester automation requires special skills, that's for sure, and that's also something that companies are doing wrong or teams because they think, oh yeah, we need to implement some automation. Let's use the latest end-to-end -end UI automation framework and automate all the things and our student can do it. We know what's going to happen. Um, finding the right tools isn't easy. That's important. I mean, that's, that's what I meant before. Just picking the most hyped tool that is yet on the market in the industry is wrong. Take your time, invest in your tech stack, then find the right tools. There is more tools to cover and to, to put into your tech stack because only one tool cannot solve all the testing challenges that you have. And then, of course, implement test automation wisely on the correct tech stack layer again to gain benefits. That's important. Think about the test pyramid, do unit testing, integration, API level testing, on top of it, some end to end UI testing, and, and then add, um, add it, off, of course, um, with exploratory testing on top. But really, do it wisely depending on your tech stack. There is no one size fits all solution that you can put from use from company A to company B to company C. It's not going to work out. You have to do your own homework. Yeah, and of course, it helps to, to ship uh, products faster. It may lead to better products depending on how sufficient and how good you're going to do and invest time for test automation. Yeah, so challenge number one finding the right test automation tool. Yes, that's for sure. I, that's what I meant before. Don't blindly pick the most hyped tool on the market. Take your time, um, invest time in, 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 in getting all the information from your tech stack, know the tools that you're using in the tech stack, and then define your goals that you would like to achieve with test automation. Then take your time and try multiple tools out. Build small proof of concepts, um, to see if the tool can handle the most challenging topics for you or the, 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 the most easy ones, depending on your product. So then invest the time and then you will find the right tool that fits your need and you can also get the support for it. And in best case, what I usually recommend to people is to write down some um, selection criteria, like what you would like to, to have from a tool, what you expect from a tool. And then you have an easy checkbox that you can say, okay, tool A, yes, check, tool B, yes, check, tool C, no, didn't check. Then you have like on a piece of paper, yes, the tool can handle all the stuff that we need or not. Selling, uh, challenge number two is selling test automation to management and the team can be challenging, especially if you are a software tester or a software test engineer who are the only one in the team who see the benefit of test automation. Then you have to fight for, for it to get it implemented with your team, like with product, because it needs time. You have to talk to developers because maybe they need to support you and stuff like that. But in, in a bigger scale, you have to sell it to the upper management to them that they see the benefits. And yeah, what you can do is you can build small proof of concepts, speed improvements, show them like on a on a really, on an easy example, what, what's the time improvement, for example, what does it mean in terms of money they can save and stuff like that. So you have to speak their language in order to, to sell the product to them, to sell the test automation to them. Yeah, so it's a tough challenge, especially in case you're not like too good in changing your, your language according to the people that you're talking to. Yeah, maybe get help from others. Challenge number three, 
uh, steep learning curve and investments. Yes, that's for sure, the, especially if you have multiple tools that you need for your test automation pipeline uh, that you would like to use. Um, that this could lead to different programming languages, different styles of, of working with an application. So you have a steep learning curve, so you have a lot to invest a lot of time maybe also money in case you, you pick a tool that is, that's coming with a license. So you have to invest those things and that's, some, that's a big challenge for teams because usually a team or somebody from the team doesn't get the time to spend, let's say a week just for learning new tools, learning new things or yeah, this, this is sometimes tricky. So you need to find a balanced way to get into this um, topic and to, to, to tackle this challenge basically. Challenge number four is fighting unrealistic expectations. Yes, I mean, I bet you have heard all of this, like, hey, let's automate all the things, let's uh, automate 100% of code coverage and stuff like that. All this, this, sorry, this wrong perceptions are out there regarding uh, test automation. It's so unrealistic expectations out there that, that people think, okay, with test automations, all of our problems are solved. We don't need testers anymore. Yes, of course. Now we have AI. We even don't need developers anymore and stuff like that. So you have to really fight for the unrealistic expectations, especially if you have like a manager or upper management who have no idea what it takes to implement automation and what it takes to, to gain the benefits out of it. And this is sometimes tedious. We have to, to explain them all over again, sell them all over again, the benefits, but also somehow educate them, teach them that this is the wrong way they would like to use the tool and that some of the, the marketing that is out there that comes for, tool, for tools is just wrong and it's not the, not the truth. And that's, that, can be, that can be hard and tough. Um, challenge number five, bad testing infrastructure environments. Yes, I bet you have all seen it before. Uh, in case your company is not ready or not there yet for uh, having uh, um, suitable test automation pipelines and environments, this is a tough challenge. I mean, setting up all the testing infrastructure, getting the, the specific test data, specific test environment, like a pre-production environment, again, takes time and is a challenge to get and then also to establish it and also to establish it not only in one team, but also to scale it then to multiple teams or to, to the whole organization, that the whole organization has a testing infrastructure, that every developer has a sandbox system, maybe based on Docker or other, uh, other technologies that he or she can use in order to try out things locally, then a pre-production environment, production environment, and so forth. So that takes time. In best, best case, you have a specific team that is focusing only on these topics testing infrastructure environments to provide them for the whole organization. That would be cool. Um, challenge number six, which is tightly connected for me to the fifth one, is the no test data strategy. Also, I mean, all of us working in product development, working for customers, we are handling some sort of data. Yeah? Data being it user data, being it, I don't know, any technical data that is coming from a different system, we have to handle the data. We process the data, we have to store them, we have to change it. And the same thing is we need test data in order to do some efficient testing. And that's why it's important that you have your own test data strategy. Can you use the, the live production data and mix it up and then and, and change the, the, the system architecture of the data, or not the system architecture, but the data itself, so it cannot be like, um, reproducted uh, onto the, to the live environment, stuff like that. So really you have to dig into the test data strategy, how to create them, how to restore it, how to transfer data from system A to B, all these kind of topics you have to have in a strategy and also of course in some technical solutions. And that's a huge challenge. Number seven, challenge number seven, not enough tech skills. Yes, this is also a big challenge and this comes back to the example that I gave before. Hey, Leo, we have a student, he or she can automate uh, our application. Usually you're like, people like not long enough in the business or not, not coming from like a tech, tech background, they don't have enough tech skills. Being in the programming languages, being in tech skills in, for specific um, technologies or system architectures. But this is needed in order to build a sufficient test automation. If you don't have the skills, you have to educate yourself, you have to, you have to ask for training and yeah, people have to understand that Testing or test automation should be treated in the same way as writing production code, because otherwise in the long run, it's not going to work out. Yeah, but that's a challenge. Um, challenge number eight, 
you don't have any support from the developers. If you're the only one in the team and you're the only one who should write test automation on all levels, you lost already. You need to have the support from the developers. They need to write unit tests. Maybe they need to write the API tests. They should write integration tests. They should write system tests. And maybe they also should write the end-to-end -end automation tests, depending on the size of the team. I mean, imagine you work as a lonely tester in one team um, with, let's, let's say, four, five, six, seven, eight developers. You will not have the time to com compete or to fight against the developers in terms of writing test automation code. You have plenty of other tasks. So that's why you need to have the support, the buy-in from them. And to have you have to, uh, to handle this challenge, to solve this challenge, to educate the developers also on the test automation tools so that you get the help from them as well. The last challenge for today is bad automation or bad test automation leads to bad test execution. I bet you have seen it also already in your career. We have flaky tests. The test takes too long. I, I'm, I, don't, I don't trust the test because they're flaky and these kind of topics. Yeah. So if you have really bad written tests, also the results will be bad. Nobody will trust the test. Yeah? If you have like this flakiness in, in your test automation, you do have to do something for it. You have to fight this stuff. Check why is it flaky? Is the system flaky? Is the test environment not stable enough? Do the test data um, strategies is not, not correct one and stuff like that? Do we have the right patterns? Do we have the right toolings? And these kind of topics. I think that's one of the biggest challenge for you to tackle is that you have to really invest a lot of time in your test automation strategy, how to build a really good test automation framework, suit, whoever you call it, to have like also reliable test execution because otherwise, you can just get rid of it because nobody will trust it, nobody will use it, and yeah, you can just just do other testing activities. Yeah, so these were the ninth challenge for today, and um, with that we are done with the video. And I would really love to hear your challenges that you have seen in your career before, or maybe some challenges that you have right now. Leave them down below in the comments for others also to read, to relate, and to start a discussion on them. Happy that you're here. As always, like it, share it, and subscribe it. Thanks for coming by and see you next time.